Hi everybody, it's Tamara from Prairie Town Girl here on Etc. Eyes, and I'm going to work on my next journal, and I thought I would turn the camera on and show you how I'm going to make this cover, because it's going to be something very different than I would normally do. If you were following me last week, you know that I was working with um, this paper pack from Little Birdie Crafts called The Classic Gentleman, and um, it's really not what I normally work with, <laughs> um, but I have actually fallen in love with these papers. <laughs> so I had the 12 by 12, 6 by 6, and the big journaling cards. And um, I'm going to continue to work with these papers a little bit and use them in my journal. And for me, they have a bit of a, a steampunk vibe to it. It's not really true steampunk, but it's about as close as I'm probably ever going to get to steampunk. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to make a journal that had a like a sort of a, a secret talisman or like a touchstone um, that like helps you enter into this steampunk world. So I'm going to... Um, use this glass stone, you see how big it is, and um, create this fun effect with this um, clock cutout, and um, it's going to be really cool. That won't be the only neat thing, we'll, we'll do lots of fun things with this. And I've got most of my materials ready, I think. Um, I have actually even done the inside of the journal. I've gutted it and um, did the inside cover, but I will show you more of that later. So to start, I want to uh, lay down this piece, and I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's got sort of like um, a faint blueprint kind of vibe to it, that kind of thing, and I'm just going to... Um, put that down sort of like in the center and I've got a brand new jar of Mod Podge for the year. <laughs> I'm trying matte Mod Podge. I've never used matte before. I think this will be... You won't really see it on this project. I'm using it more just for its glue properties um, because I have run out of snail tape uh, which is what I would actually prefer to be using rather than a, a wet glue but um, I know Mod Podge is good for this when you have like a large piece of paper that you want to lay down Mod Podge is nice for that so I should mention this as you probably noticed this paper is one-sided so I did ink the edge of my bottom and top just to make sure that if it does show, you won't be able to see that. And I'm getting glue everywhere. <laughs> so just push that down. And it doesn't have to be exactly centered or anything like that. It just needs to cover up the center section of the cover. Sorry, I'm shaking the table. And it's curling up on the edges a little bit, so I might need to either, I think I might just, what I can do is just put something heavy on top and let it dry. That should take care of that issue. While it's, that's drying, I'll just show you, this is the other piece of paper that I cut. This is the same size as the cover, um, but we're going to do something fun with it. But I'll just show you, before um, we use it, I sprayed it down with lots of different inks. Um, so we've got a little bit of, it's got a bit of sparkle now, it's got a bit of grunge, um, and then of course I did ink the sides as well because again I don't want that white edge so let's see if that's helped a little bit I might need to put a little bit of stronger glue under there
And while I've got this out, let's see here. I think we'll go with, we'll start with this piece next. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by ripping it. I know, it's scary. I'm going to rip it right down the center, just somewhere around there. see one side you're going to have a big white edge and the other side you're not and that's okay um, because we're going to rip it some more I just wanted to get the edge the the sides sort of even um, so this is going to go in the middle and I want these papers to kind of come around around it so I need to come in at least this much and I'm going to rip the paper towards me so that I get that white edge. I want that white edge actually because we are going to ink it up. There's one side and I need this to come in about over to here. Whoops. I don't want any straight edges. And it doesn't have to match the other side exactly at all. And I'm yeah, I'm getting my fingers all full of ink. <laughs> That's okay. So it's going to look something like that, and that'll be in the center. So what I need to do is ink up these white edges. I think I want to I want to get a little bit more of this off of here. It's looked a little bit lopsided. So, something like that. That's going to look good. Okay, so let's set that aside for a sec. And I just take one of my um, pages from inside the book, um, put that underneath, and we're going to ink this up. And I'm using a really dark walnut ink. I want it to be super grungy. So I laid it flat but now I'm going to hold it up so that I can really get that edge of that paper and when you do that you get a nice darker sort of border along the edge that gives a really nice effect. You can sort of see, I don't know if you can tell the, whoops, tell the difference in here. My lighting's not that great today. It's um, a very cold and gray wintry day and that's just sort of how it is <laughs> for uh, January and February around here. I'm just going to ink up the other side. Okay, so we'll bring our book back in here. I think it was like that. And yeah, so now I'm just going to glue those sides down. And if you get a lot of glue seeping over, you can just clean it up with one of your book pages. Just try to lift it up doesn't get too messy, although I don't know how successful I'm being here. <laughs> so now I've got it all over my hands.
Okay, I'm going to glue my clock face down. And now for for this guy, um, I am going to use I'm going to use clear heavy duty glue. So let's see if I can get anything <laughs> out of this. I have so many glue bottles, but I can't seem to get any glue out of most of them. So I did do a little um, test with a little marble um, just to make sure that the glue wasn't going to go all cloudy or anything like that. So you might want to do that if you're using a different kind of glue um, just to make sure. And you can find these little glass marbles, um, you can probably find them at the dollar store or sometimes they're in the, um, like the floral section at uh, the craft stores. Um, yeah, they're just sort of usually filler for the bottom of a vase or something like that. So that's going to need a little while to um, to dry. So I'm going to leave that. And um, once that's dry, I'm going to come back and I'm going to add this piece of leather to the um, to the spine. Although I will need to. Um, sew all my signatures in first. And I do have my signatures ready. They're not decorated, but they're ready to go to get sewn in. So um, I'm going to do, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to sew in my signatures and then I'll be right back and we will add a closure and a uh, cover for the spine. Okay, it's been about an hour or so and I've been just decorating the signatures a little bit and then I forgot, I forgot something, I forgot that I wanted to add these teeny tiny little brads to each corner but luckily I was able to just sort of lift it up a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can get my, get my little guy in there. Just want a little hole. And then I think I'm going to put just a little, little dab of glue under there to make sure that the, the ends don't flip around like that. Just put something heavy on it to make sure it stays down. And then we'll just do the same up here. And I also want to add a little metal nameplate down here. And then um, instead of brads on the sides, I'm going to use these teeny tiny little um, rhinestones. So this has some stickiness on here, but I don't think it's anywhere near enough. So I don't know what I'll put in here, but for now I'll just put a little piece of a book page. I think that looks kind of neat. I might have to ink that up a little bit. Okay. So I still need to um, sew my signatures in before we do the leather. So um, I think I'm just going to let all of that sit for a bit though, make sure the glue sets before I play around with it too much, but you can see how it's coming along. There's lots of layers, lots of texture, lots of um, lots of um, height, that kind of thing. I think it's really fun. It's coming along. So, oh, I lost a rhinestone. Oh, okay, I gotta find my rhinestone and glue it back down. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. OK, 
Okay, I am back. Uh, it's the next day actually and everything is really nice and secure and I've got my signatures sewn right in. Uh, I did a little bit of decorating on them. I'm leaving lots of blank pages in this one um, because I'm giving it to somebody who is new to junk journals and you know I always like to be a little careful and I don't add like loads of tags and ephemera and stuff when when I'm doing that. Um, anyways, we're going to just cover up the spine today and, and add a tie closure. So I'm using leather, um, and that's just because I happen to have a bag of leather scraps here. Um, you don't have to use leather. You can use fabric, you can use paper, use whatever you want. Make it work for you. Um, but I'm going to use, I cut up um, a piece to get a long strap, and then I cut this piece to cover the spine. So I um, am just kind of making sure this is sort of about halfway in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. You could actually have the front end shorter so that it wraps around. Actually, let's just see. Let's see how much this can wrap around. Uh, hmm. It doesn't quite make it, so I think we'll make it a tie. And I don't want to cover up our, our clock, so I'm going to make sure it's down just under the mid middle um, signature spot there. And I'm using um, this heavy-duty wet glue. Uh, it's foam and poster board adhesive from Beacon. This is from the dollar store. It's super messy. <laughs> Hopefully I can get something out of here. And I'm just going to put a big glob of glue down. And just press that down. I have used this glue with, um, I think I've used it with leather before, and I think it works, so this should be fine. Um, I'm just going to open a new bottle because <laughs> that old bottle is hopeless. And we're just going to do the same with this. We're just going to slather some glue all across and lay our leather piece down. And then I'm going to run a bead right in that fold of the spine as well, just to get it right in there. Now I'm going to run a, just a little bit more so that I make sure this bottom edge is down and secure. Try to not get it everywhere. Our cover. I think I am really, really super happy with that. Um, it's very different than anything else I've ever done, <laughs> but I am really loving this paper, and I'm I like how it's pushing me to really think a little differently about my journals. So there is a fun cover you can make, and of course. Um, it doesn't have to be this dark or this um, steampunk vibe. You could you could have a little flower under there or picture of someone's face. How about that? That'd be cute. There are lots of different ideas. I just I love this little marble, and I don't think you can tell, but it's got this sort of orangey, peachy shimmer to it. It's really pretty. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So there's the cover done. 
Um, and I think the journal's pretty much done, but I think I will wait until the next video and I'll do a full proper flip through with you then. So uh, make sure to come back to see what's inside. So I hope that uh, helped you to start to think outside the box with your journals and your papers and have fun with them. Um, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you had fun and I will see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.